Welcome to our review on electromagnetic waves and wave experiments. First thing we're going to look at then is the electromagnetic spectrum. So one thing we need to remember is that when we're considering any electromagnetic wave, then they do not need a medium to travel through. So this means they can travel through a vacuum, i.e. space. So what we've got in that diagram in the middle there then is the electromagnetic spectrum. And you do need to remember the order of those different waves. So on the far left, we've got the radio waves, then the microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, and finally the gamma rays. So what we can see is going from left to right, we've got an increasing frequency and increasing energy. However, the wavelength decreases as we go in that direction. So what we're actually looking at there then is something we've got to remember because I have seen questions before where they're going to give you blank spaces and ask you to put them in the correct sequence. So find a way that's going to help you to learn them, maybe try some little rhymes and things like this to help you memorize the correct sequence. If we're thinking about our electromagnetic waves, then they do have two properties in common. They all travel in straight lines and they all travel at the same speed, which is the speed of light, 300,000 meters per second. When we're thinking about our waves, then there are three things that we need to concern ourselves with in terms of their behavior. And the first one is reflection. So all waves can be reflected. And hopefully this is something that you are familiar with from lower down the school. Now we do have the law of reflection, which states that the angle of incidence, so the angle at which our actual wave comes in at, is always equal to the angle of reflection, the one it bounces off at. So you might be asked to draw a wave diagram. So what we've got there is the little diagram that you would have to draw. First thing to notice is you need to include your normal line, which is at 90 degrees to the surface. Then we measure the angle of incidence going from the normal to obviously our instant waves. And then we measure that exact same angle and plot the angle of reflection coming out. The only other thing to do is add the arrowheads on to show the direction. Second type of behavior is refraction. So again, all waves can be refracted. So what we find is that when our waves move from one medium into another, then we see a change in speed. And because one side of the wave hits first, that means the wave changes direction. So what we find is that if the wave is slowing down, it's going to bend towards the normal. Whereas if the wave speeds up, it bends away from the normal. So I've given you the example on the right there with the diagrams of our glass block. So what we can see is our actual waves come in and they hit obviously the glass block on the right hand side first of all. So that means that because the glass is a denser medium, then it's going to slow down those waves on the right hand side first of all. It's kind of like if you're walking through the beach and then one of your legs ends up in the sea, that leg's harder to move. So if you're actually to try walking in a line with a whole group of people, the ones on that side that are in the sea would be slowing down and you'd all start bending. Now, obviously the rest of the wave then enters and that means it travels at the same speed right the way through our glass block. And then as it emerges from the other side, the right side again is the first one out. So that one speeds up and it bends away from the normal. The third behavior is one called diffraction. Now, diffraction is going to occur when waves pass through a gap or move around an obstacle. And what we're actually referring to is the behavior where it's going to spread out. So if we have a look at the two diagrams at the bottom, what we can see first of all on the left hand side is a wave traveling through a gap. So what we see is obviously the waves come in, they hit some of the obstacles and obviously won't be able to pass through. But where there's that small gap in the middle, they will pass through there. And once on the other side, it spreads out again. So that's what diffraction actually is. It's the spreading out of those waves. If we have an obstacle, then we see a similar thing. Obviously, the waves are blocked when they come directly into contact with the obstacle, but the other ones that are able to pass pi will then diffract on the other side. And therefore, you can hear things around a corner. Now, if we consider the size of the gap, then what we find is that that will have an effect on how much diffraction takes place. 
So generally what we're going to find is that if we've got a longer wavelength or if we have a smaller gap that our actual wave is passing through, then we're going to see a greater amount of diffraction occurring. So longer wavelength or smaller gaps lead to greater diffraction. Now what we can find is while it's helpful for allowing us to hear sounds round a corner, then if we're thinking about any of our optical devices like telescopes and microscopes, then diffraction can actually be problematic because what we're seeing there is that our light is passing through a small gap in reality and therefore it's going to experience diffraction. So that spreading out of our light means that we can lose some detail on the other side and end up with a slightly blurred image.